a.m. Eastern and Pacific. That's some of what's ahead this weekend. Next, Fred Rogers, host of children's program Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Yesterday at an American University discussion, Mr. Rogers talked about the future of children's programs on public television. His remarks run about 10 minutes. We will hear first from Sanford Unger, Dean of the School of Communications. Good afternoon. I'm Sanford Unger, Dean of the School of Communication here at American University. And I want to welcome you all to our campus and to the home of WAMU-FM. We have a, uh, an unannounced warm-up act today uh, who will be familiar to all of you, I think, and uh, fondly familiar. And that is uh, Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers. He hardly needs an introduction, but let me say, <laughs> let me say that uh, Fred Rogers has been doing children's television since 1954, uh, since some of us were children indeed. And he has been on public, on PBS, for 27 years. Uh, he is, I think most of us would agree, a man who knows a lot about ethical values. He is as all-American as they come. And it's my pleasure today to welcome him back to the American University campus where he spoke five years ago in this same room and to remind him that he's always welcome in our neighborhood. Fred? Beautiful day in your neighborhood. <laughs> Maybe we could sing that together. <laughs> I've never been much of an act, let alone warm up, but uh, maybe you'd help me. Uh, could we sing? It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Good for you. Good for you. We don't have very long before the vice president comes, and he has a very tight schedule. But when, when he called me yesterday and asked if I would be with you, I, I got a few pieces of paper and put down a few thoughts that I'd just like to share with you. The best of any form of communication starts out being a gift. Gutenberg wanted to offer the gift of the Bible to people who would have never had a chance to read it. The pioneers of Marconi's radio wanted to give the gift of classical music to those who wouldn't have had a chance to go to a concert hall, maybe ever. I think about all the young people whose lives are influenced by what they see and hear on television. What a valuable gift it can be when they find something that clicks with whatever it is that's healthy inside of them. 
it's such a crucial job for us to offer images of what's possible in this life. Programs that show how all kinds of people live and work and express themselves. Not in empty hopelessness, but in healthy, fulfilling ways. If people can look at television and get the message that no matter who we are, we can make a positive difference in this life, then our work as television producers will have been worthwhile. What is it that you love to do? Just think about what, what is it that you love to do? Is there d dance, writing, welding, sculpting, knitting? What is it that you really love to do? If you would do that in front of the children that you know, that's one of the greatest gifts you can give them. Just passionately give them what you love to do inside. In the last little while, I've been giving a gift myself to people that I've talked with. And it may seem strange, but it's a gift of silence. I like to, to ask that you think of somebody or somebodies who have made a real difference in your life. People who have loved you all along the way and have helped you to become who you are today. We don't just get to be the human beings that we are without investment in a lot of other people. And I'd love to give you one minute of silence in this very busy day to think about who might have been important to you as you were growing up. I'll watch the clock. whoever it is that you've been thinking about, imagine how proud they would be to know that you've thought of the difference that they made in your becoming. This is Vice President Gore's book, and I read one phrase in here that I just wanted to read to you. It says, one focuses on being fruitful for the future. It shows a lot of hope when somebody will plant a seed and know that the tree won't be there until his or her grandchildren are grown. I thank you all for, for such a warm welcome. You've obviously been able to use the kind of television that we've produced through the years. And I go home to that neighborhood hearing you singing and seeing your faces. Thank you.